Joining me today to discuss cybersecurity is Eddie Habibi, founder and CEO of PAS. Welcome, Eddie. Oh, thank you, Seth. I'm glad to be here. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, you know, in cybersecurity, there's lots of different technologies and things, companies provide a lot of different things. Just to frame this discussion, can you take a moment and just kind of say how PAS fits into that space? We bring 25 years of experience in the operational technology arena. Uh, PAS was founded around systems integrations of uh, industrial control systems and the technologies we developed in the 1990s to manage the integrity of these control systems is the foundation of our cybersecurity solution. And the most important part of a cybersecurity initiative is that which provides you the inventory of the system, complete inventory of the system, and our approach provides the most accurate inventory plus the complete configuration of those systems. So if I was to categorize the PAS cybersecurity solution for the ICS, it would be the foundational layer, that which provides a complete inventory of the systems across the board, all the automation layers. It would provide configuration management, baseline and config configuration management, policy management, change control and change management, which is extremely uh, critical to a cybersecurity strategy as well as operational reliability and systems integrity. Finally, patch and vulnerability management and backup and recovery. We should never forget backup and recovery of these systems because we do eventually get, somebody will eventually get breached. You know, Eddie, you, you've been around the industry for quite a while, you're very well known. Uh, and I'm just wondering to get your perspectives on digitalization today. You know, what, what are the risks? What are the benefits of that from your perspective? That's an excellent question. Digitalization is the foundation of the next generation of technologies. Uh, Industry 4.0 is a name that the Europeans have given it. Uh, we call it smart manufacturing, smart factory, uh, many different names. Digitalization is the transformation of information into digital form from physical to digital and it will bring about what we call the fourth industrial revolution the first one being the of course uh, James Watts um, steam engine and then in the late 1800s the electricity brought the second generation of phenomenal technologies that transformed the world, gave us 24-7 working capabilities with lights, etc. And then the next generation, what we call the third generation, or the third revolution, industrial revolution, uh, was uh, post-World War II. Digital technologies, mainframe computers that eventually led to the information revolution. We are at the cusp of a brand new revolution that's going to bring about productivity improvements, in ways that we couldn't conceive before. This transformation is going to reduce tremendous amount of cost, automate a lot of activities that are labor intensive today. And, uh, but there is one or two, actually a couple of uh, significant issues that we have to keep in mind. First is the acceleration and transformation time period going through this transition as compared to prior industrial revolutions. This is going to be very, very fast. The second part is, with all the digitization, digitalization and the capabilities come about, vulnerabilities increase. Just as like in anything else, when you come across something really good, you have to worry about the risks and the threats and cybersecurity is the risk against digitalization. Uh, very nice. Um, what are you seeing as the is a major? What do you see as the major trends in cybersecurity, industrial cybersecurity? Of course, we're both talking about that. Not surprisingly, because we have been talking about the following for some time now. But not surprisingly, the marketplace, starting with our customers, has realized that you can't deal with security without addressing the safety matter as well. So we are seeing an intersection of safety and security right now, whereby your, your last line of defense, your last layer of protection that you used for safety, which is the safety instrument at systems, is what is going to 
prevent disastrous events from happening if there is an eventual ICS breach. Now think about it. That safety instrumented system as your last guard, if it is compromised, then the bad guys have really taken hold of your systems in ways that's unprecedented. So we're bringing about this concept of life cycle management of safety systems that should be taken into account as you assess your cybersecurity strategy. So the things that we started doing way back 20 years ago, 25 years ago when PAS started, which coincided with the advent or the release of OSHA 1910-119, Process Safety Management Regulation, we have taken those, that knowledge, we have taken the safety um, uh, best practices and are intersecting that with our cybersecurity solutions. So we see this as being probably the uh, fastest uh, traction gaining, if you will, uh, trend, trend for cyber, cybersecurity, bringing the OT people, and that's a really good way to bring the teams, the OT and IT teams together. In fact, in, after as you were talking there, it just reminded me. I think I think PAS was rated number one in, in safety lifecycle management. Am I correct? I, yes. It was not a report I write, but I mean in an ARC report. Yes, absolutely. That was that was a pleasant surprise. We just I just saw the report two weeks ago that uh, ARC released. It was assessment of software companies that provide safety lifecycle management, which is basically managing the integrity of your safety protection layers, starting with basic control loop management, alarm management, boundary management, boundaries such as your SIS safety independent protection layer. So we're really d delighted about that. What are some of the key initiatives that PAS is focusing on when it comes to plant cybersecurity? One of the areas that we are very well known for is providing inventory of the control systems. Uh, the inventory of an automation asset is the first step towards a robust initiative. The expression that we like to use is that if you uh, can't see it, you can't protect it. And there is not a lot of visibility to some of the older control systems, even some of the new ones are hard to detect. And we have methods that provide 100% of the inventory of these control systems. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I recently saw, well not so recently, but a while ago, where you received $40 million investment from Tinicom. Yes. Uh, could you comment on that? You know, the drivers behind that and, and the goals for that investment? Sid, as, as you probably know, we started the company in 1993, self-funded, uh, originally as a uh, consulting firm around the OT technologies, integrating and optimizing control systems, advanced process controls, et cetera. And uh, very quickly we came across a proprietary technology that we developed to manage the integrity of control systems. That technology became the foundation of our cybersecurity solutions where about five years ago, customers started telling us, look, what I'm using to manage the integrity of the control systems is that same technology I need to comply with NERC SIP uh, requirements and other requirements for inventory management and configuration management. So uh, over the last five years, we have seen significant demand, increase in demand for our technologies. And we reached a point about two years ago where we said, Self-funding this company is not enough. The market size is massive. Our customers are requiring faster, more rapid deployment of our software, as well as we have a lot of opportunities for uh, uh, adding to the technology, expanding the layers of the technology. Well, thank you, Eddie. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Likewise, Sid. It's great talking with you, as always. I am delighted we have a team that is just excited about the opportunities ahead. We've teamed up with a couple of phenomenal companies, uh, Siemens, Darktrace, and Tenable, and uh, we believe it's going to be a fantastic 10 to 20 years coming our way. It's great seeing you. So same here. Uh, we've been speaking with Eddie Habibi, uh, founder and CEO of PAS. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Sid. It's great talking with you.